Thank you and welcome everybody um, for today's class. My name is Birgit Koopsen and uh, I'm a brand ambassador for Jelly Arts and I am in the Netherlands. And today we're going to make uh, holiday cards and um, I hope you will join me in creating them tonight. So it's actually a really uh, basic class with really basic prints, but um, it's fun to see how you can create um, lovely cards with only a couple of layers and uh, really easy techniques and um, found objects. So um, today I'm going to work with um, my five by seven uh, jelly arts gel plate. And I don't know, maybe we can switch to uh, my table. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to uh, use my five by seven inch gel plate to create these uh, cards. And I actually, for today's class, I've cut the paper that I'm going to print on a little bit smaller than this one because I uh, like it, to, like to have a white frame around my, um, my print on my card. So the cards that I'm going to make uh, today are going to have a white uh, frame, but um, you can choose either way to do it. So I'm going to print on um, this paper, the uh, white cardstock paper from Recollections. And it's a four and a half, four and a half by six and a half inch uh, paper, but I've cut it a little bit smaller because I want it to fit on my cards and the cards are also, let me see where they are here. The cards are also from Recollections and they come in a value pack uh, with envelopes. So um, they will be ready to send out once you've printed them. And the cards are, let me show you why I've cut my paper. So the cards are all, have always already this um, line that you can fold them easily. And um, so on these cards, the ones uh, that are my samples, I've cut my paper to print on the same size as I uh, as my cards are. But now I've cut my paper a little bit smaller. So when I will um, adhere them to my card, as you can see here, I will create a white frame around my card, which I actually like better than this. But you can do it both ways. So to start, I'm going to create a couple of backgrounds. And uh, the ones that I used here, a pink one and an orange one, is basically a two-tone print. So um, I used two colors out uh, from the same um, color range and uh, created a really simple print, but because of um, how you can um, um, embellish it later, uh, you really don't need a very um, a difficult print with a lot of patterns and uh, a lot of colors. So we're going to start with creating a couple of those backgrounds. And I'm just going to use um, some found objects and some uh, and my jelly arts mini tools to create texture. So here I have some bubble wrap. I have some uh, punchinella. Here are my jelly arts mini tools. I have a pill blister uh, strip packaging. Um, I have some lace. And I have uh, a cookie tray, which has a lovely pattern on, on the bottom that I will use to create simple but fun texture. And I'm going to print today with a Winsor & Newton Galleria acrylic paint and with the Liquitex basic paints. And let me get some nice, colors. Um, let me see. That's not the right color. Um, some colors that 
are nice together. So like a magenta and a pink, and I want a little bit more orangey with my yellow. This is a nice combination. And then I'm going to use um, a bright aqua green and I'm going to use that one with, this is actually what I'm going to use for my second layer. So I'm going to put this one aside and then maybe I'm going to combine this with um, an olive green. I think that would be nice combinations. So I'm going to start with the darkest color on the plate and then I'm going to remove some of that color and use the lighter color um, to pick up the paint. And um, that's one way to do it. And I'm going to show you how. So I'm going to put the magenta on the plate. I have some scrap paper here on the side, which I will use to clean off my brayer. If there's too much paint on the, on the plate, I will uh, roll off some of the paint on my scrap paper. So um, I'm basically taking away some of the paint from the plate if there's too much. And also I'm using my scrap paper to clean my brayer in between. Um, different colors. So I can start with a clean brayer um, when I start with a new color. So I'm brayering off my brayer and now it's ready for the next color. And I'm going to use one of my Jelly Arts mini tools to create a texture. And I'm just going to make waves and so what I said I'm going to use the lighter color I want to use the lighter color to pick up um, the darker color and I get the contrast between the two colors but now this one is still very wet and it should be dry if I want to use another color to pick it up so it would be better actually if I would have a background that already has some color and I actually have a yellow one here uh, which I can use so I'm just going to use this one because it would take ages for this paint to dry this makes it easier. If I would have put a white piece of paper on here to pick this up, then my texture would be white and I would not be able to add um, color to the white areas without going over the red. I'm not doing it exactly as I want it here, but I hope that makes sense. So here we go. So what you see in here, the texture you see in here, which is yellow, that would have been white if I would have used my white paper to pick it up. And of course I wanted a two-tone uh, print. So that's why I took the already um, colored uh, sheet of paper to pick this up. This will be dry in like a minute, the leftover paint on my plate. So I can actually use that to do the technique that I wanted to show you in the first place. So I'm just going to hope that this dries real quickly. Even though I have a heater on here, it's not drying real quickly. It's probably because it's so humid. We're having a lot of rain lately. I'm just going for it and see if I can pick it up already. So if the paint is still too wet, then I will lose my texture because the new paint will just mix with the wet paint and, um, and it will just be an, create a new color. And if the paint is dry enough, I will keep the texture and uh, and pick it up with a new with a new paint. So for this layer, I need a really really thin layer because if I use a thick layer of paint, I will not be able to pick up 
um, the paint that's underneath. So that's why I'm braying off so much of that paint. And now I'm going to pick up this dry paint. So basically what I did wrong in my first uh, in my first layer is that I used too much paint um, because if I used the right amount of paint, there would not have been any paint left over on the plate and it would have been drying way quicker. But this is actually the kind of print that I was looking for. So if I had done uh, used the right amount of paint, I would have been able to pick up this print um, right away in the first place. But now I have two two different prints that uh, that I can use. So that's okay. Okay, Birgit, uh, we have our first question. Yes. So something's asking, how much pressure do you use when you're using the brayer? Uh, when I'm rolling out the paint? Yes. Well, I think maybe you should address both when you're rolling out the paint and then when you're pulling the print. Did you okay, use the so roller? When, yeah, when you pulled the print, I didn't see. When you pull the print? Like after so you, you move the paper down, do you then roll it or did you use your hands? Oh, I, I most of the time, sometimes I, when I don't think about it, I might actually use my brayer to, uh, to when I put my paper uh, on the plate like this, I might use my brayer like this, but I prefer to use my hands because then I can actually feel uh, all the different areas where if I have uh, covered all the areas, I can feel the edges of the paper that's uh, in between and make sure that I uh, put some extra pressure on the edges to pick up the paint. And especially when you work with, for instance, uh, stencils, um, or when you're masking off some areas uh, or when you work with leaves or feathers or something like that, it's very important that you um, put pressure in the areas around the higher parts because otherwise you will not be able to pick up the, um, the paint from the plate if you uh, don't go in those areas and your brayer will not go into those areas. So it's better to use your fingers because then you can actually feel where the details are and make sure that you uh, pick up that paint. So, so how much pressure do you use when you're just rolling out the paint? Uh, as little as possible. Okay. I'm actually going to do it the other way around for this print. I'm going to put on the yellow first for a, uh, uh, a solid layer. And I as little as possible actually, because I don't want, um, the lines in my paint, if you put a lot of pressure on your brayer, um, you hardly ever will put exactly the same amount of pressure on both the left and the right side. So one side will always have more pressure than the other one. And then you get these lines into your paint, especially when you have a thicker layer of paint, you will notice them very well. And the less pressure you put on your brayer, the less lines you will get. So I basically try to just um, um, uh, put my brayer in a certain um, direction without really putting pressure on the brayer. So I could actually hold it like this. It just has to roll over the paint. Um, but uh, yeah, of course, if, if you don't mind those lines, I mean, sometimes I actually like those lines because they're adding texture or, uh, yeah, if you don't mind the lines, it doesn't really matter how much pressure you put on there. But if you want nice and smooth uh, prints with uh, as little lines as possible, then you should put as little pressure on there as possible. And as you can see, there is like, hardly any line in my background. It's really nice and smooth. Um, and I will do another one where I will put a little bit more pressure on, uh, on my prayer so you can see the difference. And it doesn't really matter if you use it as a background and you work on top of it and there's going to be more layers and more um, 
more texture. But if you want solid uh, sheets of colored paper, then um, it is important not to put too much pressure on there. So usually I would just roll it like, like this and put no pressure on there. But if I put a little bit more pressure on there, you can see the lines. I don't know if you can see them. I can, maybe I can hold it up a little bit. I don't yes. know. Can you see it in the paint, the lines? If, you will see if it. You tip, yes, as you tipped it to the side, we could see it a little bit. Okay, I will, you will be able to see it when uh, I print it, probably. Mm -hmm. So I will just print it and then I will probably be able to show you. It's always harder to see on camera than in real, but yeah, you can see it. So here you can see the lines in the paint and those are uh, from the pressure on one side of the brayer. So, and I, I don't really mind those lines. I actually kind of like the lines, but as I said, it de depends on what you, what kind of print you are looking for and what you want. Um, so the more careful you are, the smoother your print will be. Okay, so these two, I will now print a second layer on top and um, with some texture. And I'm going to use the orange on top of the yellow. And I think I will use the uh, lace for this one. That needs a little bit more. It's funny that uh, even though you have the same brand of paint, some paints, uh, some colors need more paint than others. I don't know why that is. It's maybe because some colors are opaque and some are translucent and maybe that's, um, there's a difference in consistency or something that um, why that happens. And that's why I never exactly can tell people how much paint you need, because even if you use the same brand, it can um, it can be a different amount of paint to get the same kind of layer. So just imagine having different brands. Every brand has his own its own um, consistency and opacity. So it's very hard to give a specific amount of paint that you need. It's just, you just have to try and, um, and then also the circumstances in your room um, have influence on how much paint you need and how fast it dries and stuff like that. So you will just have to try in your own uh, room with your own paints, how much you need. But I would say, Birgit, that the less, less is more. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. I think that's a good rule to think about. But I see a lot of people doing videos, but they're using a lot of paint and you don't really need yeah. that much. Yeah. No. No, it actually, um, so you see a lot of people using a lot of paint and then they say, oh, look at that. I can do uh, a second print and sometimes even a third print like I like these two that I had before. Um, but actually that first print is never uh, the previous print because if you use too much paint, uh, it shows in the print. You get uh, some kind of weird texture when you use too much paint it's like uh, it's 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 threading or something I don't know how to explain it well in English but uh, um, it gets some kind of texture and um, if you want that second layer of paint to do the ghost print um, you can always you can also fake that by just letting your paint dry on the plate and then pull it with a new layer. So you don't have to make that first not so nice print to get that second layer. Um, so I always say, 
if you use the right amount of paint, your plate will be clean when you pull your print. If there's still a lot of paint on your plate, you use too much paint. You, you use more paint than you need. And uh, to get nice and even and smooth prints, it's better to use not too much paint. And you can always, uh, if you still feel after printing that uh, you needed more paint, you can always add an another layer. So let me see. I planned on using this one with this one, but I don't think this will really show up on there. So I'm actually going to uh, go for a lighter one. Maybe that's not even light enough. How about I just put... Oh, like a baby white, uh, baby blue. I mean, I'm just going to try. I also have uh, some backup prints here to go to the next step if I don't have enough prints here. And let me see what kind of... How about some bubble wrap? Let's do some bubble wrap. Bubble wrap is always fun. And everybody has it, I suppose. Well, at least if you ever order something online, then you must have some bu bubble wrap somewhere. And it always gives a really fun texture. Although, I wonder how much of it will show up on this background, but we'll see. And I also really like what's happening here. So this sheet I can use, I don't know, maybe a hundred times for doing this. And I always get this, this frame. And then when I just move it around or just use it in different areas that at some point this um, piece of paper will be filled with little uh, stripes of uh, pattern and color uh, colors and um, make some great collage paper. Oh, it's not a really a really big contrast, but there's some some contrast. But I would probably um, in real life I would probably add another layer on top of this. But I'm not going to do that now because I can show you my process with the ones that I already have. And um, there's more that we want to do today than just printing backgrounds. So I'm just going to the next step. So to create um, these cards, um, what looks as the background on this card, the blue, the blue sky, is basically the second layer. So um, I'm printing on top of one of my um, of one of the prints that I just made, and I'm going to use a mask to uh, cover up the area that has to become um, the Christmas tree. And of course, you can do this with any shape you like. You can use a star or a candle or whatever you want to print, just create a mask. And to create a mask, you can just uh, draw one yourself. But of course, you can also go online and just Google for Christmas tree shape or star shape or whatever. And you will get tons and tons of shapes that you can just print and then cut out. And the one that I used for these cards is one that I cut from paper. So I just uh, printed it and cut it from paper. And then when you do a couple of prints, you get this like uh, layer of acrylic paint on top of the paper. And it um, gets quite uh, sturdy and you can use it many times without tearing it. But if you want to create a, a mask that you want to keep for like forever, um, you can use something like a Duralar. And uh, I have it here. Duralar um, is like a, a polyester film and it's um, translucent. So you can just take a sheet of the Duralar 
and put it on top of your uh, printed shape like this and then you can just trace it and cut it out and it's like it's a polyester film so it's kind of like a plastic and uh, it will not tear you cannot tear it and uh, it can hold wet medium so it will not buckle it will not um, um, it will just react as when you buy like a real stencil so uh, a mask or, or a stencil cut from Dorlar is like a stencil that you can use over and over and over again. You can even clean it. So I, because I want to work on a smaller sheet of paper, I needed a smaller Christmas tree. And that's why uh, I'm not using my original one, but I created a smaller one from the Dorlar. And that's the one that I'm going to print with now. And um, besides that, I'm going to use my um let me see where did i put it i have this like repositionable adhesive i had it here like a minute ago and i have no idea where it went okay i will probably find it but uh, I have a repositionable adhesive. Here it is from a scrapbook adhesives, um, also available at Michael's. And I'm going to use that um, to adhere my mask to my background and make sure that it doesn't move. So here I have one of the cards that I just made. Yes, this is the right size. And um, I want to print my background on top of this. So I'm going to position my shape with the repositionable adhesive on my background. And I hate the little blue spot there that's there right now, but I don't, I think I cannot avoid it. So I will just have to go with it. And now I can just print on top of this, turn it around without my uh, Christmas tree moving. And when I remove my mask, uh, any adhesive that stays behind on my background, I can just rub it off. But I will show you that later. And so I want to create that blue background. And um, the color that I want to use, the Prussian blue, is um, a semi-translucent color. So it might be that it's not covering enough of my uh, background. And I might need have to um, do a second layer. And then also the repositionable adhesive comes in handy. Because obviously, I could just roll out the paint the way that I'm doing now and then I could just put my mask on top of my paint and then put the uh, paper on top but um, by doing it this way I can I have way more control over where exactly I want my Christmas tree to be and not that when I pull it up that it's a little bit too, too much to the left or too much to the right. So that's why I'm using the repositionable adhesive. So I'm just going to put this down. And rub it and here comes the what I was explaining before why I like to do this with my hands because now I can actually feel where my mask is and if I want to make sure that I go into those areas like in these areas what uh, the brayer might miss that area that there's not enough pressure in that area and it's not going to pick up the paint and when I use my fingers I'm way more likely to cover all those little spots. So hopefully it um, covered up enough of the background and I'm actually, well, it is not like really translucent anymore, but it's still so translucent 
that the color is not really blue, more, but more like a greenish color. As you can see, my um, Christmas tree is the original color that I put on the plate and everything around is more like green. And uh, I want it to be more blue. So um, I can just add a new uh, an extra layer on top of that. And I can just leave my mask on and create another print. But first I want to remove this from the plate. And of course I can use a baby wipe and clean it off. But I can also just uh, take another sheet of paper and print it and um, maybe at some point I feel like um, some doodling or something and I can just take some Posca markers and create a, a fun card with uh, from my leftover paint from the plate. As you can see I have a pretty Christmas tree here. So now I'm just going to apply another layer of this paint and what I could even do is add a tiny little bit of white. Um, it will make the, the blue a little bit lighter, but also a little bit more opaque because the white is, uh, is an opaque color. And I'm going to mix it and it might actually make the blue a little bit brighter on top of this greenish background that I have now because um, that's what you get when you use translucent colors even if you don't really see the pattern underneath anymore you will still see the color that's underneath shining through which will change the original the original color so let's see what happens now And again, I'm going to put some extra pressure around my, my mask. But even if you miss a spot somewhere, that's also, you can also fix that by adding another layer um, if necessary. So this looks a lot better. At least that's my opinion. This is like a blue blue and not a greenish blue. And now I can remove the mask from my background. So you have to keep in mind when you use the repositionable uh, adhesive that um, the paint on your background, it needs to be dry. If the paint is still a little bit wet, um, it might happen that uh, when you take off the mask, you're also taking off some of the paint and you get little white spots in your, in your background. So if you don't want uh, to risk that, make sure that your background is dry enough. So, and the blue is still wet. So I have to um, put this apart. Uh, I have to put this aside to, uh, to dry before I can, uh, actually work on it and uh, complete it. So I'm actually going to do um, another print. And this one, because I have been talking, might be kind of dry already. So I'm going to pick this up a little bit differently than the one, this one that I did before. I'm also going to put this aside because that also has to dry. I could clean it if I want to, but um, I don't really see a reason why, because I can use it um, over and over again still with the paint on it. So I'm just going to put it aside. But if you like cleaning and like clean tools, then you can definitely clean it with a baby wipe or with a wet cloth or even just put it uh, in some water and rinse it and then um, it will be clean. So I would clean it if I uh, would use it with alcohol ink and want to use it with alco alcohol ink again because alcohol ink will reactivate and then um, you will mix the old colors with the new colors. So that would be the only reason for me to clean it when I want to use it with alcohol ink. Um, I want to pick up this 
Christmas tree and I'm just going to use some let's do a couple of colors how about let me see a yellow and a permanent rose and some white at the bottom. Okay, so while you're rolling that pretty thing out, somebody asked, can you use India inks with the jelly plate? Um, you can, know. yeah, you can actually use almost everything on the jelly plate. Um, but the thing is, what do you want your product to do on the gel plate? Because an ink like India ink is very fluid. And when you put it on the plate, it will, um, how do you say it, beat up. So oh. it will not, it will not, cre you will not be able to create a nice uh, even layer of ink on the plate because it will just, um, yeah, I think you call it beat up, right? Yes, yes, beat up is right. Mm -hmm. So um, you can create really fun uh, watercolor effects on the plate using uh, fluid products, but you will not be able to spread it the way you can spread acrylic paint or for instance, stamping inks. Uh, if you use stamping inks, they, you can actually spread them on the plate and some of the, some uh, stamping inks will not beat up, but the more fluid or the more wet they are, um, the more they will beat up and the less um, uh, clear details you will get you will get in your print. But if you're looking for nice uh, watercolor backgrounds, you can definitely use it. It's not like uh, you will um, it will affect your plate or ruin your plate or anything. You can definitely use it. So here I'm going to pick up uh, the already dried paint from my plate. And um, hopefully create a fun print also that I can then work on later and create a card or something with so it's uh you always get more out of uh of a session so if you sit down to create cards like this then you also always get your like uh, leftover paint that's underneath your uh, mask that you can then also create prints with and look at this how fun is this i can totally imagine uh drawing or doodling or stamping on this and create a fun a fun card with this so that's the bonus prints that you get when you work with uh with mask and especially when you use something like the duralar because the duralar is actually leaving um that paint behind on the plate if you use um uh like a paper mask especially the first couple of times uh, your paper mask is going to pick up the paint the same way as the paper um, that's around the mask, like your, your background paper. So it's not going to leave any paint behind on the plate that you can then pick up later. It's only until um, you made um, many prints with the paper mask that it has this like plastic layer and it will actually resist the paint and leave it behind on the plate. But if you use the Duralar, you will have that uh, basically from, from your first print and then you get to make all these like bonus prints. And now you can see I'm just rubbing off um, the repositionable adhesive. I can just rub it away. And now my uh, Christmas tree is clean. So what I did after uh, pulling this print, I took um, a Posca marker, a white one, because I want to create this like snowy wintry background. 
and you always have to shake your Posca markers because there's like real acrylic paint inside of the Posca marker, but because it's so fluid when you don't use them, um, the fluid will um, sit on top of the pigments. And so if you start using them without shaking, there's just going to come like almost clear fluid out of the pen instead of like the thicker acrylic paint. So that's why you need to uh, shake them and then if the paint is not running then you can uh, push them down until um, the paint comes out. So I created a little bit of snow on top of the branches of the Christmas tree like there's a lot of snow and create that like wintry feel as if the Christmas tree is outside. And you could also do this if you uh, use, for instance, like a star shape, you just can't do it like you should not do it on, on, the, on the bottom of the star as if, for instance if this would be the star you can do some snow here and here but of course not here because that not make any sense as just as I would not put any snow underneath my um, branches here and that would not look right so this is really actually really simple and I think this would also be uh, a fun project to do with kids because they can definitely do this like it's a two-layer print to create the background and the first layer is only a solid layer of paint and the second one is a textured layer and then uh, with simple masks and you create that uh, final layer. I think this would be, could be actually a fun school project with even the younger kids. And then I want some snow down here. And then of course I want the snowflakes in the air. And uh, you can, you could do that with uh, a brush and white paint, but I like to do it with my Posca markers because that's easier and cleaner. And um, there's less danger that you have like a big blob somewhere where you don't want it because that happens to me all the time when I use uh, a brush and paint that I get like a big blob of paint somewhere. But if you use your Posca marker, you can just take a pair of scissors or even your brayer or a ruler or something and just hit your Posca marker and your little letters come out and you get smaller ones and a little bit bigger ones and you have an instant snowy landscape. And of course, if you want to make cards um, that are not necessarily Christmas cards and you want the splatters, you can use any color you want, of course. I'm just real quickly going to dry this because I want to add something to this. Are there any questions so far? <laughs> okay, yes, there were some, but I didn't want to interrupt because I was watching. I want because yeah, okay. I'm I'm gonna make these cards this year. <laughs> okay. They are yeah. That's so, so adorable. I do think it's a beautiful thing to do with your younger little artist. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's, a fun, yeah. it's fun, a fun project that can be done uh, by smaller kids, younger kids quite easily with a great result. So they um, actually can be proud of what they created. Yes. Okay. So, so can I just, all right. So we always get these questions about when we talk about inks. So here are a few questions. Are yeah. alcohol inks as fluid as the India ink? That was one. Uh, and do you have the same beating problem with distress oxide inks? So do you want to um, talk about those at all? So the thing is with the alcohol inks, um, they are definitely as fluid as the um, India ink. India ink, but um, it's a very different product and the alcohol inks, um, they dry quite quickly. And I think that is one of the reasons that you actually can spread them and, um, and um, they stay kind of where you put them. Yeah. Where the um, and I don't know exactly what the reason is, but like the India inks and the watercolor inks and stuff like that, they start beating up, and the alcohol inks don't, or at least don't as much. Mm -hmm. um, so it's yeah, it's 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 a very different product, and the okay. distress inks and the yeah. distress oxide inks. Mm -hmm. um, they have quite a lot of water in them and um, they don't beat up as much as uh, inks that you have like in a bottle or uh, like watercolor paint or something. But you will never get um, a layer that is so um, smooth and even as if you work with, um, with acrylic paints. Okay. You will always get that. You will always get that watercolory look because of some beating up in some areas. You will never get like a really uh, even Smooth. layer. Yeah. Okay. So um, while I was talking, you saw me already creating uh, using um, what's it called? <laughs> Hole punch. A hole punch. A hole punch. We call it a perforator. <laughs> okay. All right. That sounds like a very complicated word. <laughs> it's not. It's not really complicated, but I can imagine that if you're not Dutch, that is that it sounds complicated. <laughs> um, our words are not really that complicated. I mean, you should listen to some Finn people talk. Then that's complicated. That's all right. That's really complicated. Uh, so I'm just creating little, uh, like uh, some kind of confetti, mm -hmm. basically, from leftover pieces of uh, colored printed paper. But of course, you could also use uh, something like sequins, if you like uh, sparkling. Um, you can definitely uh, use these with a techie glue and glue them on. Or even if you uh, want to spend more time and um, add more details, you could even sew them on if you want to. But um, that's too much work for me, <laughs> to be honest, especially for Christmas cards. Um, because I know a lot of people will just throw them in the bin after Christmas and I don't want to spend too much time on them. <laughs> okay, that is the funny part. I have a bin of Christmas cards every year because I can't throw them out. And so I just, they just keep piling up. It's so, it's, I, can't, yeah. I don't have the heart to throw them out. I know, I've done that too for years and years. And then at some point I had two drawers full of Christmas cards and I was like, when am I ever going to look at them again? And I just threw them all the way. But it's kind of, yeah, it's sad to do that. People uh, put something personal, a personal note or something on there. And, you know, it's just, yeah, yeah. I, I always have a hard time throwing them out. But luckily, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's sad. Maybe it's luckily uh, not so many people actually send Christmas cards anymore. You just get an email or 
<laughs> or no. chat message saying <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> no, but I love the cards and I'm I do make, I do too, but I'm, yeah. I have to make fun of you here because I see you struggling with these little dots in the glue. Like putting yeah. little dots on something with glue drives me crazy because my fingers get all covered in glue and I know, and there must be an easier way, but uh, I haven't found it yet. <laughs> but um, so, and you get the idea <laughs> of putting this, these little dots <laughs> on, the, on the card. I'm not going to glue them all on there right now, because I also want to show you how I created um, this white kind of frame around the uh, the card here so that's also really easy but i'm going to show you anyway i just took a little sponge and some white paint and then um kind of go around the edges to add some of that white Okay, Bernadette, you can't believe all the great ideas people are telling us what to do with our old Christmas cards. <laughs> but, oh, really? Oh, it's yeah. So I bet you nice. All kinds of crafts with them, I'm, I'm sure. Create yeah. new Christmas cards from old Christmas cards and they stuff make like them that. For the, uh, Christmas cards for their senior centers or nursing homes. Oh, really? That's such a nice idea. That is a good, good really good idea. Um, so, yeah, we have to think about that, not just throw them out, but um, I still something. have mine in my basement. <laughs> well, I'm then now busy. you know what to do. Now you know what to do with them. Right. So when you finished your Christmas card, you can just use some adhesive and um, Glue them on your uh, folded card. It's as simple as that. It's really not that difficult. So uh, last year, I also taught a Michael's class on Christmas cards. And um, I will show you, show them in a minute, the ones that I made last year. So I'm just eyeballing this and I'm not sure if it fits, but this is the idea. So I don't know what, uh, which one you prefer, but I really like the white frame around my print. Uh, but as I said, whatever you like. So if you want um, the bigger one, it's easier to print on a bigger plate because this is actually, I, I think, is that right? Yeah, this is actually a little bit too wide for the smaller plate. So if you have uh, a larger plate, you can, uh, it's easier to create these. And um, on a smaller plate, you can create the smaller ones. And then uh, here I have some samples of the cards that I made last year and those were actually not only a card but they were also an ornament that people could then take off the card and use as an ornament to decorate their home or their uh, Christmas tree so it's just hanging uh, on the card and this is made with um, a masking tape printed uh, I printed on masking tape and then used the masking tape to uh, decorate the ornaments and uh, hang them on the card and the video is available as a recording and uh, I think Lou Anne is putting it uh, the link in the chat right now so you. if you want yes. great so if you want to uh, go a step further and uh, do a, a little bit more intricate uh, project uh, or a little bit more colorful, then um, this might be a nice option for you and that you can also watch and maybe uh, get some ideas. And then um, in one and a half, about one and a half week, I think on November 14, I will be back uh, with another free Michael's class, uh, Jelly Arts Michael's class, and I'm going to create these cards. 
And um, so I hope you will join me then again um, for some card making, colorful card making fun. And uh, I hope you enjoyed today and uh, you get, got some ideas to create uh, some handmade Christmas cards for your uh, loved ones and friends. And um, so I hope you all have a re really lovely day today and I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>